So the last of the intermolecular attractions that we want to talk about is called the hydrogen bond. So we had talked about the attractions that hold ionic compounds together. That is lattice energy, energy required to pull them apart. We have the other attractions that we're seeing here of, you know, dipole, dipole, and dispersion force. Now we're ready to look at this last one called the hydrogen bond. So let us uh, see what it is. It's a, it is a type of dipole, dipole. So it's an, it is polar and polar attracted to each other, but it is like a um, dipole, dipole on steroids, okay? It is a super strong type of intermolecular attraction, a super strong type of dipole, dipole attraction. It is so much stronger than the others that it gets a category all of its own and it's called the hydrogen bond. Now this is when it will occur, okay? This is the criteria to have it happen. We need a one molecule that has a hydrogen atom directly connected to an O, N, or an F. So we have a hydrogen that has a covalent bond to an O, or an N, or an F. So that's a covalent bond. That is not the hydrogen bond, okay? That's the first criteria of it. And then you need another molecule that contains an O, N, or an F. When that happens, there is an attraction between this H and that guy, all right? This H and that guy, this dashed line is the hydrogen bond. It is an intermolecular attraction. So this is one molecule being attracted to another molecule. This molecule has to have the H directly connected to one of these guys. And this molecule simply needs one of these guys. And then you've got what you, all the criteria needed to have a hydrogen bond form. So I said it's a super strong intermolecular attraction. Because it's way stronger than dipole-dipole, it results in much higher melting points and boiling points than you would expect based upon the size of the molecule. We know that with dispersion force, the bigger the molecule, the greater the attraction, and that that really plays a much larger role than the dipole-dipole attractions, okay? But when this gets thrown into the mix, all bets are off. It has got such a strong intermolecular attraction. It's much higher than what you would expect from the size of the molecule itself. So let's see just some examples and see how they play out here. I'll move to the screen and we'll talk through them. We have, in this case, a hydrogen directly connected to an O in this molecule. This molecule has an O and that dashed line is the hydrogen bond. Here we have a hydrogen directly connected to an N. This molecule has an N. That dashed line is the hydrogen bond. Now you can mix and match. You could have, oops, gosh, how did I do that? Okay, you could have a hydrogen connected directly to an N right here, right? Being attracted to an O. So a solution of ammonia and water, that's ammonia cleaners have that, you have set up a hydrogen bond. Well, the same kind of molecules in a mixture, we could have the hydrogen directly connected to this O being attracted to a nitrogen. It's meeting the criteria, okay? So in this chapter, we generally stay with between two like molecules. So I've got a glass of water, what's holding those molecules together, okay? I have liquefied some ammonia. Ammonia has been condensed into a liquid and they're being attracted together by hydrogen bonding. All right, so we're gonna examine this graph here for a moment. What do we see? We see the criteria for hydrogen bonding resulting in much, much higher boiling points than what you would expect. So let's follow the blue, okay? H-E-T-E, H-E-S-E, H-E, I mean, sorry, H-E, H-2-T-E, H-2-S-E, H-2-S, these are all in the same family. Sulfur is smaller than selenium, which is smaller than tellurium, and oxygen is smaller yet. You would expect, based upon its mass, 
it to have a value down here in a negative, let's say, 70 degrees. We know water does not melt at a negative 70 degrees. It melts at 100 degrees, way higher than its trend would expect. The same thing would happen. Let's look at the red. We have HI, HBR, HCL. You would expect HR, HF to be down here, but it's not. It's way higher than you would expect. The same thing for antimony, um, arsenic, phosphorus, and you would expect ammonia to be down here somewhere, but it's not. It's way higher than you expect. Now you pick in the next element over. Let's see, we have oxygen, fluorine, nitrogen, and carbon, and we do the carbon family. The carbon family just keeps on going down, so carbon doesn't meet this criteria, but it's way higher than you would expect based upon its trends, okay? So, making sure that you've got it, looking at that graph, you see that H2S has a lower boiling point than H2SE. H2S is here, H2SE is here. Now this is not an argument of hydrogen bonding because it doesn't meet the criteria. This is a review question of something we've covered earlier. What accounts for the fact that H2S is lower than H2SE? Well, it's got to do with its dispersion force, okay? They're both polar molecules, one's more polar than the other, but H2S, it's much smaller, therefore it has um, less dispersion force, and dispersion force is playing the role here. All right, so let's summarize all of our rankings. Let us say we are given all sorts of compounds, and they say, I want you to rank them according to their strength of their attraction. Now sometimes they'll say rank them according to their strength of their intermolecular force and then they might throw an ionic compound in there and then we know this lattice energy is thrown in there as well. So what you want to look for is you want to look for an ionic compounds first. This is not an intermolecular force, is it? It is a, whew, I can't seem to get through that. Okay, this is a lattice, lattice energy. And we have lattice energies are really, really strong because they are full positives being attracted to full negatives. They have very, very strong inter uh, attractions between their ions. And so we'd always look and list them first. They would not only have the strongest attraction between their entities, not really between molecules, but between their entities, and they would have the highest melting point or for that matter, boiling point. I've never seen anybody try to boil an ionic compound, but I suppose some of them can. The next thing you would look for is anything that met the criteria for hydrogen bonding, because we know that's a super strong type of intermolecular attraction. And then we would look for mass. Why would we go to mass next? Because we know dispersion force wins out over dipole-dipole. So the bigger the mass, let's write this out before we look at that statement. The bigger the mass, the greater the intermolecular force because of dispersion. And once you've ranked that, and now you're comparing things that are about the same size, about the same mass, then you're going to go to which one has got the largest dipole moment, which one is more polar. So you can take any comp sets of compounds and you can rank their strength this way, and then you can rank their melting points and boiling points this way as well. You'll practice that a lot in your homework, okay? This is an important, that's an exclamation point. Ooh, maybe that's an exclamation point. This is an important slide to help you uh, when they say, rank these by their strength, rank these by melting point, this is what you're going to look at and you'll practice that. Now, last thing I want to leave you with is, um, besides melting points of liquids and boiling points and freezing points uh, with liquids, there's some other properties that are common with liquids and I want you to read and be responsible for um, the definition and the um, how intermolecular force affects surface tension, 
the definition and how intermolecular force affects viscosity, all right? So you're looking at their definitions and you're also looking at their magnitude of their IMFs and how they affect them. Now notice it's all intermolecular force. There's no lattice energy mentioned here because liquid ionic compounds is an oddity, okay? That'd be a very unusual environment indeed. And so that is our last lesson on intermolecular forces.